Howard, you have a new memo out, the seven worst words in the world. What are the seven worst words in For the world? For an investor, too much money chasing too few deals. When, when uh, there are too many willing buyers and they're too avid and they have too much money, prices go up like and any returns other returns go down. Returns go down and risk goes up and safety goes down. And uh, that's one of the things that it's essential to be aware of and to act accordingly. I have to be honest with you, Howard. Your memo left me, and I suspect others as well, a little bit unsatisfied. And I say that because you conclude with three really important points. The first is that credit markets are over-aggressive. Too much money right. chasing too few deals. Right. That sends one message. At the same time, you say there's no sign of economic weakness, and so the good times may go on for quite a bit longer. Right. The third point you make is that there's still a lot of uncertainty about the future because of this crazy mix of monetary, fiscal, and trade policy that we have right now and the resultant economic conditions right. that they create. Right. Investors can't tell how cautious you're telling them to be. Well, you know, Eric, it, in my career, which now spans 50 years, there have been only a few moments when everything was good or everything was bad. It's not black and white. We're usually somewhere in between. And I always try to convey that rather than gloss over it. Um, it's not as bad as 07. And I say that in the memo. And yes, there, were a lot, there were a lot of things wrong in 07 that aren't wrong today. Uh, number two, uh, yes, there are excesses, especially in the credit markets. But in most markets, on the other hand, they're probably not going to uh, require a, a penalty until the economy weakens, and there's no way to predict that that's going to happen anytime soon. You're very clear in this memo that you're not calling a bubble. Right. It feels to me, however, that you are, if you will, sounding the alarm. Yes. Is it fair to say that you're sounding the alarm? Well, I'm calling for caution. Uh, Is alarm, that the same thing? Alarm sounds alarming, and I don't <laughs> want to be an alarmist, and I don't think it's appropriate to be an alarmist today, but, you know, the economy has gone upward for almost 10 years. The markets have gone upward for almost 10 years. The too much money phenomenon is certainly underway. It would be a mistake to have as much risk in your portfolio today as you did two years ago, five years ago, or 10 years ago. You have to acknowledge that. I use the term calibrate. Today is not the time for max risk, full risk, or for, in my opinion, evenly balancing offense and defense. Your, your portfolio should be skewed toward less risk. Yes, but not extremely. You wrote a similar memo back in February of 2007, the race to the bottom, and you cited in this memo and that many of the conditions you described back then yes. are the same as what we see today. Now, what I'm getting at here, and you make this point in the memo, is that even before February of 2007, Oak Tree was selling. Yes. You were selling assets, you were getting liquid, and you were raising money, a lot of money as it turns out, $11 billion for a distressed debt fund that you put to work in the financial crisis. Yes. What is Oak Tree doing today? Well, we are... Are you selling? We are selling assets. We're also buying, but I think we're selling more than we're buying. We're selling highly appreciated assets, buying b bargains when we can find them, but it's not easy. We have raised another... Distressed debt fund. Distressed debt standby fund, this time only $8.5 billion. Uh, I can't claim prescience as to the timing. We did it three years ago. We thought something was coming, and it hasn't come yet. Uh, so it's sitting on the shelf. We're not putting it to work very much. We're not charging many fees. And we're waiting. And I think our clients are happy to wait with us because they want to have that hedge, some money committed to a fund that can invest when times get tough. You're also clear in the book, Howard, about the fact that you're not a forecaster. Right. In fact, you're quite dismissive of forecasters. Right. Um, and you're also not a market timer. So, again, I'm trying to help people understand where we are. Well, you know, what a, a, a cyclical yeah. top is not a moment in time. Right. It's something that takes shape. Right. Have we entered the cyclical top? Probably not. Uh, maybe we're on the doorstep. Okay. Uh, but uh, you say the conditions are similar. They are similar qualitatively. 
Some of the things that went on then are going on now. But quantitatively, no, they're just not as bad. It's not egregious as it was then. You take up in the memo, and again, I'm drawing distinction between yes. the book and the memo, both of which I want people to read. Um, it's worth your time. You take up the extraordinary growth of private credit and direct lending right. more specifically. You may be aware of a white paper that Aries Management published in April in which they estimated the size of the direct lending market. This is some months ago. Yes. In the United States alone at almost a trillion dollars. It's surely bigger now. You, you mean the potential appetite? No, that's how much money there was already in, uh, in direct lending. A lot of money. Yes, it is. You note that direct lending isn't necessarily bad, and of course it may be good for the companies that are borrowing that can't get that credit from a bank. What's the downside? Well, it's also good for the clients whose money managers have good judgment in making the loans. The downside is that when there's a lot of money, when there are a lot of new funds, when there are a lot of new first-time funds, which I evidence in the you memo, point out, yes. there's this race to the bottom that takes place. The bidding in the auction gets heated. The results for people putting money to work are generally negative. And so the question is, are the people putting the money to work making good credit decisions? Opacity has traditionally been in the long run, a bad thing for financial markets because where there are dark corners, we can't see what's going on. Right. Direct lending is a dark corner. Yes. yes. There is no public pricing like there are for there is for high yield bonds, for example, and there is no reference pricing like there are for loans, leveraged loans, and syndicated loans. Does that concern you? The lack of transparency into that market. You know, Eric, the lack of transparency is a negative when it creates systemic risk. I don't think that the risk embodied in direct lending is systemic to the economy. Uh, some bad loans are being made. Uh, in, in the memo, I quote Warren Buffett saying that it's only in the bad times when the tide goes out that we find out who is swimming naked. And we'll find out. And there will be some bad loans that won't get paid. People will lose money. I don't think it jeopardizes the economy. How do you have any idea how much money would need to be in direct lending before it becomes a systemic risk? No, I couldn't give you a figure on that. Trillions, though. Yes. I mean, if J.P. Morgan has a balance sheet of three trillion dollars and Bank of right. America is right. of similar size, and so is Citigroup's. Yes. Yeah. And remember that each of those organizations has a diversified portfolio of loans, and then a, as a small part of an overall diversified portfolio, which includes treasuries, uh, top quality loans, real estate loans that are secured, etc. Before we go, Howard, is being more cautious and taking less risk also synonymous with now is the time to be hedged? Hedging is a form of being less cautious, uh, more cautious. And, uh, you know, I, I do think that this is a time, but our motto at Oak Tree is and has been move forward but with caution. We're not hesitant to invest. We're investing every day. We're endeavoring to be fully invested, but in a more cautious portfolio.